year for the Olympics, Dorothy and the rest of the American team found themselves competing in Berlin during the height of Nazi rule. Adolf Hitler himself presided... Approval of council minutes. So moved. Second. I'll uh, read it. The, I move that we approve the work session meetings of Tuesday, uh, meeting minutes of Tuesday, September 6, 2016, as well as the formal meeting minutes of Tuesday, September 20th, 2016. Great. Motion by council member Mendenhall, second by council member Penfold. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion passes. Uh, we're now moving on to item B of our agenda, which is the public <laughs> hearings. We do have a couple of public hearings tonight. Uh, just to remind you all, uh, we are always looking for a, a environment where people are comfortable sharing their opinions. Uh, in doing that, we ask that you uh, please refrain from any clapping or jeering or cheering, booing, uh, or any sort of uh, rude uh, behavior. Um, so. The first public hearing that we have tonight is regarding the fine tuning of local historic district LHD designation process. Uh, and I do not have any cards. I don't know if, if there is anybody who is interested in speaking. Okay, if you do have, if you have not yet filled out a card um, or, and are interested in speaking, please, uh, please fill that card out and hand it to uh, our staff member and we will call you. Uh, so the one card I have is for Lynn Pershing. Uh, each uh, speaker will have two minutes to make their comments. Well, I am out of breath. I got here fast. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about uh, the fine-tuning of the local historic district ordinance. It's a sad day. A day of hypocrisy. A day when our governor and our state legislature can complain about overreach of federal government on state issues, and yet they impose the fine tuning that they have in HB 223 to our local historic district ordinance in Salt Lake City, and specifically written against my neighborhood, Yocrest, yet has a devastating effect on the entire state. I've heard multiple calls and multiple comments from people all over the state who were in the process of creating local historic districts to protect their history. I find it ironic that today or yesterday they opened a box that was buried for a hundred years in the state capitol. We've maintained that building for a hundred years. Yalecrest is a hundred years old. Is there not something worth saving there? I believe there is. I do not support, I do not support HB 223. I think it is a particular problem in our politics today when a one single local citizen who lives on my street, Jeff Robbins, who is CEO and head of the Utah Sports Commission who is under the Economic Development Office of the governor of our state, can use, can use cronyism and his, his executive board, which include all the hierarchy of the state legislature, to create and get this bill passed. I do not support these changes, these fine tuning of the local historic district. I think they were just fine before. I think it's bare, I think it bears witness, 50% pass and 50% fail. You don't get a better democratic process than that. Time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pershing. Uh, seeing no further cards, um, I'll look for a motion. Mr. Yes. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. I'm just kidding, Stan. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move that we close this public hearing and defer action to a future meeting. Second. Okay, motion by Council Member Penfold, uh, second by Council Member Rogers. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Uh, the next public hearing is item number two on the agenda, 
uh, the video services ordinance amendments. And I do not have any cards for this public hearing. Uh, is anybody, is there anybody in the audience interested in speaking to the video services ordinance amendments? Mr. Chair, seeing none, I move that the council close the public hearing and defer action to a future council meeting. Second. Motion by Council Member Rogers, seconded by Council uh, Member Mendenhall. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion passes. Uh, we'll now move to items, uh, or yeah, item C on the agenda, potential action items. Uh, we do have a couple here as well. Uh, the first is the Lincoln Elementary School Master Plan Amendment. Uh, Mr. Look, Chair? Council Member Rogers. I move the Council adopt an ordinance amending the Central Community Master Plan and the zoning for the properties related to Lincoln Elementary Master Plan and rezone petitions. Second. Motion by Council Member Rogers, second by Council Member Mendenhall. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chair, I move the council adopt an ordinance closing and vacating a portion of unnamed city-owned alley situated between Roberta Street and 300 East. Second. A motion by Council Member Mendenhall for item two on the agenda, the Lincoln Elementary School alley vacation. Second by Council Member Rogers. Any discussion to this item? Council May Member I? Mendenhall. Absolutely. Uh, these two motions or uh, the votes that we're taking here are for what has already begun uh, construction for the new what will be Liberty Elementary and an expansion that's gonna, going to include a, a community <coughs> center, um, an expansion of that that will provide medical and many other services to the families at the elementary and in the area. Um, it, it requires expansion of their property. So anyway, I think you all knew that, but I just wanted to update you that it is ongoing and you should drive by sometime and check it out. Thank you, Council Member Mendenhall. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, the third item is uh, um, the 1117 East South Temple Rezone and Master Plan Amendment. I will look for a motion. <coughs> Mr. Chair. I move the council adopt an ordinance amending the zoning of property located at 1117 East South Temple Street for, from RMF 35 moderate density multifamily residential district to RMU 35 uh, residential mixed use district and amending the avenues community master plan future land use map subject to the administration and petitioner entering into a development agreement to be recorded against the property that limits the property to residential uses only and prohibits any future commercial use on the property. Motion by Council Member Rogers. Second. Second by Council Member uh, Johnston. Uh, like any to discussion to this? Item? Yeah, I would like Council to. Council Member Penfold. Uh, no, if Council Member Rogers would accept a friendly amendment to include setback requirements as part of that development agreement. Absolutely. Okay, so there, Council Member Penfold uh, has made a friendly amendment to Council Member Rogers' motion. Uh, and Council Member Rogers agreed. Does uh, Council Member Johnston accept that as a second? What are the, do you have any specifics you're talking about? Or? The, the zoning that we're considering changing allows uh, construction out to the property line and at a minimum we wanted to consider setbacks to match the adjacent uh, apartment property. That came up as part of the conversation in the uh, public hearing. I'm amenable to that. You what? I'm amenable. Okay. We're good. All and right. So we have an we have a, a amended motion that includes uh, the property setback. Um, any further discussion to this item, Mr. Chair? Council Member Penfold. Um, I'm going to reluctantly support this, um, and, and my reluctance is uh, uh, at a couple of levels. Um, we are finding more and more situations where we are. Uh, I think as a council feeling like we're cornered into a development agreement arrangement with uh, a, pr uh, a property owner or a petitioner who's proposed a modification to their property and it uh, indicates to me that we have some serious problems with our zoning ordinance. Um, uh, I uh, will we'll reference Cindy Cromer and her comments uh, 
during this public hearing process that we are removing through a development agreement the one use that this zone is designed to incorporate. Um, that is really problematic. Um, we are also requiring a change to a master plan in this process, and albeit a very old master plan, uh, it highlights for me that we probably have some compatibility issues on our infill requirements for the city. Um, the master plan uh, did not anticipate or accommodate this sort of level of density in that location. I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't be looking at density. What I'm suggesting at is that I'm going to become more and more reluctant to look at development agreements as a tool for zoning because I think that's just a really bad policy. It also uh, leads us to situations, and, and I have experienced several, where uh, we end up um, <laughs> getting bit uh, because uh, the property owner or the proposed petitioner didn't follow through with their development agreement. We have no capacity or ability as a city to monitor these long term. Um, so um, I guess I would like to include a little bit of legislative intent, but I haven't written that out. And I know how Margaret um, so encourages uh, concise statements. So after the motion, I think I'd be prepared to make some legislative intent. Mr. Chair, I, I just have a question for legal as well. Um, in regards to this, Margaret, can you tell me if we can file a notice of interest with the development agreement with the county so that we can track it so it's always tied to the property, the development agreement? I know there are some, and Nora may have something to weigh in on this too. I think we can. There are tools. Margaret, yes. can, you, can you identify yourself just Sorry. for the record? Margaret Plain, city attorney. Thank you. There are tools that I think the city could be using to track those, of course, rely on resources in terms of people to do the work, but my understanding is that's one tool we could use. I think that's what I would look f look for as well, is that we record that with the, re the county recorder, so it's, you know, hand in hand with that, that title. Great. Any further discussion? Councilmember Mendenhall. Could we hear from our planning director, Nora Shepard, about the um, friendly amendment to address setbacks and how that was or wasn't addressed in the discussion so far about the development agreement. Sure. About the commercial or about the? No, about the setbacks. Setbacks. Um, Nora, can you identify yourself? I'm Nora also. Shepard, the planning director, and I will probably defer to Michael Malloy. I think that the applicant is proposing to maintain consistent setbacks anyway um, because he has heard from the neighbors that they are concerned about that. So I, I believe that that's their intent and they wouldn't have a problem with it. That's what so I thought I recalled, but I wanted to And I sure. do believe that's uh, accurate, but once we change the zone, we have no ability to enforce that. So right. I think it's really important that we include it as part of the development agreement that says at a minimum, the setback should match the adjacent property on the west. Thank you for that catch. Thank you, Nora. Yeah, and we certainly do have um, issues with our RMF zones um, and we we need to definitely relook at those because we can't really get increased density so much that we want without the commercial component because it has to go to an RMU to get the increased density so I think relooking at the RMF and the density that that allows is an important thing we need to do it's on the list thank you Nora I think you just worded my legislative intent okay. Okay, so we do have a motion. Um, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, and the motion passes as amended. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, move that we draft a legislative intent that the planning department and the administration review our RM and RMF particular zones uh, to identify the conflicts between uh, the city's desired for increased density and compatibility with existing master plans and uh, zoning. Great, motion by Council Member Penfold, second by Council Member Rogers. Any discussion to this motion? Um, and uh, Help me if I'm wrong, Stan. In looking at this, because the, the small area plan for this area is old, should there be some legislative intent to look at updating ma uh, master plans or small area plans as well? Is well, if, if we have to start <laughs> diving into it like this, you we already know that something. I'm sure there's existing legislative intent to update our master plans. Uh, 
I, I, this in particular is coming up uh, around development uh, agreements, and that's what's causing me a lot of grief. We saw a similar proposal on Night East. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing that in uh, several areas where either we've got a mixture of zoning or uh, our master plans are, have not been reviewed to match the desire we seem to be having to increase density in parts of town. So so the reason I wor worded it the way I did was because I think it's going to require some recommendations from the planning department for modifications of our RM zones and maybe some addition of some other tools in that area. But it also gets to some of the compatibility issues we saw in Sugar House, we saw with some of the RM zones that we're looking in trolley where we're trying to mitigate some of that impact to single family as well so i i don't think we should separate that process out from those other compatibility issues great any other discussions council member mendenhall thank you um in addition i would like to not through legislative intent but request through our chair and vice chair that we put on our potential discussions before the end of the year because then you won't be chair and vice chair and I can't request it of you that we have a briefing about development agreements the history of them in the city the legal authority therein or not um, and so that we as a council be can become more educated on this tool that we're using more and more often and I, I think without the the foundation of knowledge necessarily of both what it means for the future of those projects that we have development agreements on, but what the intention of that tool was in the first place. So I, I know we have a lot of things on our agenda, but I think it would be really useful. It reminds me of when we have voted on alley closures, and you remember once upon a time we swore we weren't gonna vote on any more alley closures until we had a great policy discussion around them. I don't mean it to go the way of the alleys. Let's, let's actually I talk I think that was it. last year's chair. Two. And, Two and, just, and just a reminder, <laughs> Councilmember <laughs> Mendenhall, uh, that was your issue, and you just made the motion to pass this most recent alley. Closure, <laughs> so. Actually, I think it was Luke Garrett. It wasn't me. <laughs> all right, okay. any further Where discussion? <laughs> uh, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, we'll now move to item D on the agenda, um, questions to the mayor from the city council, since we do not have uh, the mayor or anybody from her office uh, at present, I guess we will move to uh, the comments to the city council. I think my um, question would be, where's the administration? Um, I can actually we'll have to follow up with them. That. They checked in, I'm sorry. What? Yeah. They did check in to say that there was a problem with having someone here tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll now open it to uh, comments to the city council. As with the public hearings, we ask that uh, Members of the audience, uh, be courteous. Uh, no cheering, booing, jeering, uh, or any rude behavior. Uh, if you are interested in speaking, please fill out a yellow card and hand it to uh, our staff member. Uh, I currently have uh, five or four cards. Uh, the first is from Douglas Cotant, who will be followed by George Chapman. Each speaker will have two minutes to make their point. First of all, I want to say that uh, uh, during my vacation in New York, we had a we had a situation where uh, uh, there was a there was a, a fellow that was uh, making some disturbances in New York City. You probably heard about that. And uh, one of the days I was on uh, the train going to. New York, and we were uh, held up, and we were stopped in Yonkers, New York, due to police activity at Grand Central Station. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to, I want to uh, ask is, uh, I was over in the other room uh, listening to the uh, talks on the about the. Uh, 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 housing, and I don't know if Lisa's trying to avoid me because she's usually friendly with me. You know, uh, we uh, greet each other, 
but I guess the reason being is because because they had that had this other meeting. Uh, I will say that uh, on another subject, I will I will say that uh, I had a, I had had a good time in New York, and I uh, taught and and I visited with my brother and sister-in-law and uh, and nieces and nephews. And no, I did not attend any government meetings while I was back there, although I was tempted to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cotant. Uh, George Chapman Go. followed. Sorry. Go. Yeah. Uh, George Chapman followed by Cindy Cromer. Good evening. I'd like you to cancel the Mountain Accord Agreement. I'd actually like you to have a public hearing on it. It deserves to have a public hearing. What you're talking about doing is creating the Central Wasatch Commission, which has bonding authority. This is something you should be required to have a public hearing about. You're talking about creating an entity that in the past is a follow-on from the Mountain Accord, which has not had public meetings. They have said on their website they don't have to follow public meeting law. Yet the auditor, the state auditor today released a letter saying, no, the Mountain Accord people, executive board, does have to have public meetings open to the public, yet they've actually stopped people from attending their meetings. So you're talking about a new commission that follows on and implements Mountain Accord, and yet they don't have public meetings. You should have a public meeting. I'm asking you to do what UTA board did, what the Salt Lake County Council did, and they postponed action on the Central Wasatch Commission at least for a couple of weeks. In the case of uh, the County Council, one week. But you need more analysis of this. You're talking about creating an entity with, that can enter into financing agreements, which obligates taxpayers through the commission members. Plus, adding commission members is onerous beyond belief, so essentially you're giving four people total control over what could be all of the canyons. And I have a problem with that, and I hope you do too. So I'm asking you to postpone this for a public hearing. It deserves a public hearing. Please consider that. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Cindy Cromer, followed by Bernie Hart, and uh, Mr. Hart's card is the last card that I have, so if there's somebody else interested in speaking, uh, please fill a card out and, and pass it forward now. Hi, I'm Cindy Cromer. My comments tonight are extemporaneous. There will not be a handout, because I was not expecting to address you. I am, of course, thrilled by the friendly amendment regarding setbacks. You have respected the authority of the Landmarks Commission in making that amendment tonight on the motion regarding 1117 East South Temple. Thank you very much for doing that. And I'm also thrilled um, that you're going to look at development agreements. I was getting to be tedious and boring on the subject, so I'm just very pleased about that. Now, what I want to say and feel compelled to say before this conversation goes any further is what happens in the RMF zone because that's where I've invested. I have a whole bunch of buildings in the RMF zone, and that is where you can do affordable housing. I have tall, skinny Victorians that have four, six units in them. And if you march on this zone in terms of its redevelopment, you will destroy much of the very meager affordable housing that's left in the city. All of my units meet the HUD standards for Salt Lake City in terms of affordability. That is extraordinary. And that cannot happen with the redevelopment parcels of those parcels unless you are going to fund it. So I am gravely concerned that that is the target instead of what Dr. Chris Nelson told us to do, which was surface parking lots and one-story office buildings. Dr. Nelson will be back later this month. It would be wonderful to rope him into a conversation about what's happened in Salt Lake City since he moved to Arizona. Maybe he would do that just, you know, gratis. Um, but he had some very wise things to say about um, the redevelopment of this city, and he'll be back from Arizona for a conference, and we could ask him what he thinks has transpired in his absence, but he told us where to put additional housing. Service parking lots, one-story office buildings. That's where it needs to go, not on my tall, skinny Victorians, please. 
my tenants would not be happy. Thanks. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Uh, or Council Member Penfold. Just a point of privilege, I can't express how disappointed I am that Cindy thinks we don't listen to her. Um, that's all. <laughs> Mr. Hart. <laughs> Maybe she should speak for me. <laughs> um, again, I want to thank you for your hard work. It was a nice session this afternoon. I'm here to speak about homelessness and uh, address some of the issues that you brought, a few of them. And uh, I had a, a conversation with a gentleman this afternoon during the hearing, and um, he's been around the issue for a while, and I turned to him and I said, uh, 30 years ago when the road home was built, were you uh, listening to the same type of dialogue, uh, people wanting to do good and wanting to help people, and do you feel like you're back engaged in the same process, going in the same direction? And he said there was a lot of similarities, and. Um, like it's been mentioned in the past, this is a chance to do things differently, I hope. That's my hope, that we don't repeat the same old mistakes, or maybe not mistakes, because they, we didn't con consider them mistakes. Or Again, I think uh, Mr. Zeminkovich from the road home mentioned uh, he went home disappointed every night because he couldn't solve everybody's problem. But uh, good intentions have only have taken us to where we are right now. And we do have a, an increased population of homeless, probably proportionate to the population, no smaller than it was 30 years ago. And that speaks volumes to the programs that we're using to deal with the homelessness. And the only thing different in this whole process than, than what was happening in the past, the good intent is still there, but there's a pay for success process that's part of this that wasn't part of the past. And you had a couple of pointed questions today about the road hole program and the rapid rehousing and how they're measuring success. And those, uh, those are the type of questions that have to be, be asked. We have to be tough, I think, in, in how we measure success so that we know we're spending our money wisely and putting, actually putting in programs in place that help the people that need the help because the intent is to help, but programs that don't work don't help. They just waste money and they take up space for programs that can be creative and actually help. So. Thank you, thank you for the questions you're asking. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Uh, and seeing no further cards, we'll move to item D, or oh no, sorry, item E on the agenda, new business. We have one item here, um, Mountain Accord Next Steps, uh, supportive house bill number 5718 regarding Central Wasatch National Conservation and Recreation Area Act. Mr. Chair, I'd like to introduce this uh, motion by expressing my uh, gratitude to the administration for listening to our concerns um, in, when this originally came before us and making uh, every effort to accommodate our concerns, which I believe they have done in the proposal currently in front of us. I move that the City Council suspend the rules and adopt the resolution of support for the Central Wasatch National Conservation and Recreation Act. Uh, motion by Council Member Penfold. Do we have a, we have a second? Second. Second by Council Member Johnston. Any discussion to this item? Council Member Mendenhall. I just want to emphasize that what we're supporting here is a resolution to support a plan, not the creation of an actual entity. We aren't creating an entity by passing this resolution. And yet, it will probably lead to that. And that the, <coughs> the body that uh, the resolution is supporting the creation of would be implementing what was a, an extremely public um, and exhaustive process with more stakeholders than you can shake a stick at um, that took a very long time and came to a unanimous consensus. And so what this is creating, as you know, is a body that will implement the plan that was created through a, a, a very extensive process. So I'll be supporting it. Great. Council Member Penfold. I would like to echo Council, Council Member Mendenhall's comments um, and uh, just reflect on what a significant effort this is toward protecting our most critical and important asset, which is our watershed. And uh, honestly, the only uh, feedback I've heard from people who do not support this proposal tend to be from people who uh, only intent that I can see is to develop in the canyons. And um, I think this proposal goes a long way to balance uh, protection of our watershed with any future development of our watershed. Thank you, Councilmember Penfold. Any further discussion? 
uh, we will look to our city attorney. Okay. I just want to remind council there are two different things that you're voting on, and this first one is is not the okay is not the creation of the Central Wasatch Commission. Correct. It, that's correct. It, that is yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Your comments seem to go to both, so yeah. I just wanted to make sure the, you were. The the I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm guilty of going great. hot to the big great. level. Just yeah. wanted to be clear for the record. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion passes unanimously. We'll now move to item F on the agenda: unfinished business. We have two items here. Uh, the first is the Mountain Accord Central Wasatch, Wasatch Commission Interlocal Agreement. Uh, and this is where actually the administration was very helpful. <laughs> uh, I was just anxious. Uh, I got ahead of myself. So if uh, you're so anxious, uh, Mr. Council Member Penfold, would you like to make a motion? I would, absolutely. Okay. I move that the council adopt the resolution authorizing the mayor to sign the Central Wasatch Commission Interlocal Agreement and the Interlocal Assignment, Assumption, and Consent Agreement. Second. Great. Motion by Council Member Penfold, second by Council Member Johnston. Any discussion to this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, the second item is establish grant projects from grant holding account. We'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt. A motion by Council Member Penfold. Second. Second by Council Member Rogers. Any discussion to this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, we're now at item G the cons on our uh, agenda, which is consent. Move Me approval. Second. second. Motion by Council Member Rogers, second by Council Member Mendenhall. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? motion passes unanimously and that is the final item on our agenda thank you all for participating tonight and we will see you in two weeks Woo!